So I'm delighted to have with me in the studio today uh, Mikhail Mamuta. He's an expert in microfinance with the Central Bank of the Russian Federation. He's also a chair of the Digital Financial Services Expert Group for the Alliance for Financial Inclusion. Thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, thank you uh, for inviting. Could you tell me a little bit about the activities of this working group that you chair uh, within AFI? Yeah. You know, it was one of the first working groups launched by AFI, mm -hmm. and initially it was called as Mobile Financial Services. But then we called to rename it to Digital Financial Services because digital is more wide mm -hmm. and digital is more prospective rather than just mobile. So Digital Financial Services is a range of different services that can be provided through digital channels to unbanked people. Unbanked people is our ultimate goal, so we would like to serve them with very transparent, very pretty cheap, and uh, uh, let's say comfortable services for them. Yeah. So in the working group, we do a lot of different activities, starting from uh, development of basic methodology and basic terminology of digital financial services. We do a lot of p-learning, so we compare different experience and try to find the best and uh, let's say. We, we try to help our members to build the most effective strategy and policy in digital financial services. And we work a lot on so-called focus nodes. And um, uh, those focus nodes or guidelines are devoted to different aspects of digital financial services, starting from terminology and to supervision and oversight. And I believe this is a very important part of our work because uh, DFS is very new and uh, frankly speaking, we don't have any standard that we can do common, but we have to work out something that will be a foundation for such standards in the future. And the Digital Financial Services uh, Working Group of AFI, I would say is very popular, is not maybe good to say popular, but it's very, um, a lot of demand for this. Mm -hmm. Because now it, uh, let's say more than uh, 50 members and 43 countries, join it so it's the biggest working group within the AFI and the number of people and number of countries who would like to join it is growing. It means that digital financial services is really something that people need all over the world. I think in fact you, you mentioned this is for unbanked citizens and I think that people would be surprised to know that Russia had an unbanked community. I think in Africa we accept this is pretty much the norm for many countries but uh, quite an advanced and developed nation like Russia uh, who is this community of people who are, are not banked and is this, do you think this is actually more widespread than we think I in most mm -hmm. countries? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I think that we have unbanked people all over the world, in all the countries, both in developing and developed. They are different, mm -hmm. but they are. And in Russia, for example, it was stated sometimes at the very high level by top level officials, including our president, that uh, level of financial inclusion is not sufficient. So first of all, Russia is a huge country. We have a lot of people who live in remote area, who live in small settlements, towns, villages, with no access to banking offices, just because there is no bank offices. Yeah? They can get some services through Russian Post, through microfinance organizations, but still they need more. They need transparent uh, transactions. And here, digital financial services is something that can help because almost everyone uh, have a mobile phone. Not really smartphone, but mobile phone is enough to do, uh, to do basic transactions. And this situation is more or less the same for many other countries all over the world. Other people do not have access to banking accounts because, for example, they are migrants, migrants, sorry, uh, labor migrants or uh, temporary workers, and they do not have uh, uh, Russian citizens, and it's it's real problem for them. So through development of digital financial services, we can help them uh, to be, let's say, uh, to to send their money and do it tra uh, do do such transactions effectively and transparently to their motherlands. I was talking to one of the earlier interviewees about the lack of regulation in this area mm -hmm. you, and, and you've got an overlap too from mm -hmm. the sort of telecom side mm -hmm. to the, the mm -hmm. banking side. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as an advantage in, in mm -hmm. developing this or is it actually slowing mm -hmm. things down? It's a very good point. Yeah, we definitely have a lack of regulation because regulation usually follows market. It cannot be <laughs> ahead of markets because, yeah, it's some kind of a support for the markets. And uh, given that we are talking about where new matter, digital financial service, then uh, in many cases uh, regulators are thinking what is the best approach 
to regulate and to supervise this new kind of animal. And uh, what, is, what is very special here, that is uh, mobile money or electronic money or DFS in general is some kind of a um, combination of uh, money matter mm -hmm. and uh, a channel matter. Mm -hmm. Because we serve this service, we, uh, let's say, manage it through mobile phones uh, or other kind of mobile devices. So it's very clear that uh, approach to regulation and supervision in this area is a joint uh, task for financial regulator author regulatory authorities and telco authorities. And now, frankly speaking, between uh, this event too, we are thinking how to join our efforts to be the most uh, successful and effective. I was going to ask you about the international dimension because you're here for the, uh, the ITU's focus group on, on digital financial services. Uh, what do you hope to achieve through your membership of that group? Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm very happy to be here. And this is my first experience with international, uh, international Communication Union. And uh, this is great that uh, uh, ICQ pay attention, decided to pay attention to this topic. Uh, well, this is the first meeting. So we do not expect to solve all the questions we have. <laughs> Moreover, we are going to ask these questions. And we're going to ask each other, financial authorities, telco authorities, private sector. We are going to uh, ask each other how to uh, approach this problem. And I very much hope that we will, will be able to find a reasonable solution. Could you tell me how the Alliance for Financial Inclusion could contribute to ITU's work in the development of new principles and, and frameworks, guidelines for regulators? Well, in our work we pay uh, a lot of attention to different uh, aspects of digital financial services. Uh, we work a lot on technological issues, on regulatory issues, uh, on uh, KYC and AML safety issues related to terrorism and hacking problems, uh, integrity, and uh, some of those issues are very closely related to activities which are done by telco mm -hmm. regulators and uh, especially for example technological issues or transferring of data or fair access to USSD and SMS messaging services or for example consumer protection mm -hmm. and uh, again uh, we have to recognize how to work on this together because for example a Russian Central Bank or other financial authorities all over the world they pay attention and regulate financial risks but they do not regulate risks of technological issues they do not regulate uh, for example hacking risks in uh, mobile uh, world and uh, here is a huge potential for cooperation we need each other financial authorities needs uh, or need uh, telco authorities to work on this together. I think uh, any kind of financial platform must always be a risk for, uh, for cyber attack. And Russia is actually one of the world leaders in, in cyber security. You have some really cutting edge uh, companies there uh, in this area. Do you think that you can contribute particularly to uh, building a kind of best practice mm -hmm. uh, cyber security framework and help other countries to make these systems safe and, and secure? Thank you very much for this question. I really appreciate it. You know, uh, I think yes, we can. Uh, and uh, uh, the Russian Central Bank very recently launched a multi-year, very comprehensive project on digitalization of financial markets. This project will include a lot of issues related to simplified identification, development of digital financial technologies, and more and more and more. And for this project, we uh, already set up close cooperation with our telco ministry. And uh, it's very clear when we look to the roadmap for this project, we see that in some matters the central bank leads because it's financial risks, in some matters the telco ministry leads because it's technological and informational risk, and in some matters we join our efforts. So uh, we definitely can, uh, let's say, um, share with the rest of the world, with the other members of our community, our experience, including experience in security. That's a very, very important question for digital financial services. Mikhail Mamuta, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much.